Hello, I'm Dr. Sheetal Deshpande. I'm an Ophelloplasty Consultant at Dr. I Institute. Welcome to our channel iLogs, which has everything to do with vision and eye care. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, make sure to do so. And also hit the bell icon so that you get the latest updates. Watering of eyes or tearing from eyes is also called as epiphora. Epiphora happens when either there is an overproduction of tears or there is some compromise in the drainage of the tears. Tears are very important for us. Tears lubricate the eye surface for proper functioning. Tears help to flush away some foreign particle or dust from the eyes. And tears also protect us from infection because tears contain enzymes and antibodies. It's very common to produce excess of tears temporarily. For example, emotional tearing. For example, when somebody is laughing, when somebody is crying. It's very common when you are coughing or vomiting or yawning. Tearing can also happen when you experience some strong taste sensations. For example, bitter or sour. Commonly, temporary tearing will resolve on its own. But when the tearing is persistent and it starts hampering your daily activity, that's the time when you should see your doctor. So the question is, when should you go to a doctor? You should see a doctor, number one, when there is pain and swelling around the eye. Number two, when eyes are too red and sticky. Number three, when there is reduced vision. Number four, when you think that something has fallen into the eye. Number five, when there is persistent burning and fatigue in the eye. Your doctor will examine you, ask some questions and do some tests. So depending on the result of the tests, your doctor will diagnose what is causing watering in your case. The most common cause of watering today is paradoxically dry eye syndrome. So your eyes are receiving less lubrication, so they tend to produce abundance of tears to make up for the deficiency. Sometimes eyes may not be dry but the quality of the tears is not appropriate. They don't contain the proper balance of water, salt and oils that they should have. In this case also eyes would feel irritated and produce too much of tears which spill out of the eye. Another major reason for watering is eye strain. Your eyes can get strained if you are working late hours, if you are working too much on screen. As a result, they get stressed, fatigued and eyes start watering. Eyes also water if you have common cold, allergies or sinus problems. Eyes can water if you get an eye infection which is called as conjunctivitis or pink eye. Infection can also happen over the eyelids and lashes which is called as blepharitis. Eyelids can also get small boils which can also lead to watering. Eyes can water if some foreign particle gets into the eye and starts irritating. If you get hurt in the eye and there is a scratch over the eye, again eyes will water. Eyes can also water if there is smoke or, or there is intense light which is hurting your eye. If eyelid shape and position is not proper, for example if it is interned or outturned or sagging, that can also cause watering. Sometimes the eyelash is misdirected and it pokes into the eye, that can also lead to watering. Sometimes your natural drainage system of the eye is blocked. It is called as blocked tear ducts. It can also lead to watering. Some medications can also lead to watering. Some treatments like cancer treatments which includes radiotherapy and chemotherapy that can also lead to watering of eyes. As we have seen there are many reasons that can lead to watering of eyes. So the treatment will depend on the cause. So if your watering is caused by dry eye syndrome or computer vision syndrome, your doctor will give you artificial tear eye drops. These eye drops resemble the natural tears of the eye so that when you put the eye drops, the tear deficiency is replenished and balance is maintained. If watering is due to an infection like conjunctivitis or if it is due to an allergy, your doctor will give you antibiotic eye drops or anti-allergy eye drops to treat it. If watering is caused by infection over the eyelids, your doctor will give you eye drops, ointments or even tablets. If there is a boil which is called as Thai or Calaisian, your doctor can even do a small surgical procedure to remove the pus from the boil. 
If watering is caused by a poking eyelash, your doctor will remove it. If a foreign particle has fallen into eye, your doctor will remove it. If your eye has got hurt or injured and there is a cut or abrasion over the eye surface, doctor will treat it with medicine and it can also be repaired surgically if needed. Eyelids are like windshield wipers. They smoothly rub against the eye surface, spreading the tear film so that tear film is stable. But if eyelids are not a proper place or the position is not good, then the tear film is not spread properly and it tends to fall, which causes watering. So if eyelid is interned or outturned or sagging, we need to surgically correct it, do proper surgeries, which is called as entropian surgeries, ectropian surgeries lid tightening surgeries which brings lid to its proper place so that the functioning is good. If eyelashes are misdirected and coming again and again then we might have to do a small surgical procedure to burn the lash permanently. All the causes that we discussed were due to overproduction of tears. Now let's discuss the blockage of drainage of tears. Normally the tears are formed in the lacrimal gland, accessory gland and mebumin glands. Tears formed wet the eye surface and they are naturally drained into a system which is called as lacrimal apparatus. Lacrimal apparatus has many steps. The first point of contact is the punctum. It's a small hole on the inner end of the lid margin. The tears would go into the punctum first. Then they go into a small channel which is called as canaliculus. After canaliculus, the tears would go into a bag. It is called as lacrimal sac where tears collect and finally the tears would go through a duct which is called as nasolacrimal duct and get drained into nose from there they are swallowed into the throat so this system if there is blockage at any part any level will lead to watering from the eyes so let's discuss the first point of contact which is the punctum if the punctum is too narrow or like we say it has become stenosed this can lead to watering so what causes punctum to get stenosed it can be age or burn or trauma or swelling once the punctum is stenosed your doctor needs to dilate it that is to make it bigger it can be done by a surgical instrument called as punctum dilator doctor will put the punctum dilator uh, make it bigger and flush the system with saline so that it becomes clear sometimes even after this procedure the punctum can reclose then doctor might have to do a surgery which is called as punctoplasty the punctum is widened and a stent is put inside so that it stays open for longer time and stays like that this stent can be removed after six weeks if there are blockages further down like in canaliculus sac or nasolacrimal duct then your doctor might have to do a bigger surgery which is called as dacrocystorhinostomy surgery. In this type of surgery we create a new opening for the drainage of the tears so that we bypass the blocked channels. A small opening is created in a bone of the nose and lacrimal sac is attached to this new opening. This surgery can be done externally also which means there is a small cut on the side of the nose. It can be done endoscopically also which means through the nose and it can also be done through laser. In case the blockages is in the canaliculus we might need to put a silicon stent to keep the canaliculus open. This stent is removed 6 weeks after the surgery. So now we have come to the end of today's episode. So, if watering of eyes is bothering you, please pay us a visit.